Hey guys, welcome to The Rebirth. This is Shay Marriott. Joining me is my boy, Eli Isabel, and also the lovely Jen Frontel. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> what up, Rebirth? What's up, Rebirth? I know it's been a minute, right? Oh my gosh. Yes, <laughs> yes got so many projects going on at once so I just got finished recording for the therapy room and you know so we got the rebirth popping off so welcome welcome so yes, what we're talking yes. about tonight we don't have no toe I have my glass looks like <laughs> Eli, he you eating a water icy or something what's going I'm on the, the <laughs> good. I'm it up, it up. I got my water that's water too it's just in a wine glass mm. Okay, fancy. It's five o'clock somewhere. Oh, it's five o'clock. <laughs> who, who knew? <laughs> so, guys, um, we are going to be talking about. Jen came up with this topic tonight. By the way, I just want to put you out there, Jen. Mm -hmm. We are actually living in a cancel society, right? Everybody yeah. canceling everybody for certain things. So, your question was. Are we being too sensitive about things? Are we personalizing some things? Um, there's been times where comedians can say whatever it is that they want, and now they got to go back and recant and all this other stuff because people are now canceling them for mm -hmm. saying certain things or having, you know, inappropriate jokes or whatever. So just wanted to jump on real quick and um, have this conversation. Um, let's, Jen, since you, you know, you brought this up, what, mm -hmm. what you about? being sensitive and not just in, you know, a worldly form, but also just in our relationships. Mm -hmm. I think what spearheaded this conversation for me was that you know, noticing in like, you know, friendships and, and work relationships and things of that nature, just taking things personally, right? Mm -hmm. And I think especially too with cancel culture, I think sometimes we're dealing with two things, people taking things personally. And number two, I think sometimes people hold them, other people to a stand, a set of standards they, they don't themselves hold, you know? And I think right. that can become like a very sticky situation. And so many issues kind of ensue from kind of reading into things that really have much, nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? And I think for me, the question becomes, how do you begin to to decipher when you're taking things too personally, when you're making it about you, when it really has not much to do anything with you. Right. Wow. Right. Okay. All right. So um, I would say probably from a, and, and, that, and that's a good point. So I want to definitely address this from a relationship standpoint, mm. um, as well as a work relationship, and then the whole cancel culture as well, you know? Right. So mm -hmm. I, I think when, especially when you're in the beginning of a relationship and you're learning each other, um, you have to really kind of know when a person is joking and not joking, you know, because mm -hmm. sarcasm can kind of, you know, be out there and you're like, okay, well, did he or she really mean that? Or, mm -hmm. you know, like how, and this, one, this is why communication is important, right? This is why we have to have Definitely. good communication. And, you know, I always like to say, you know, listen, Listen here, listen with your eyes, listen with your ears, you know? I mean, I, I, I pointed to my heart and said, <laughs> <Your> heart, <yeah. laughs> listen with your heart. So you need to listen with your eyes, your ears, and your heart, because you want to make sure that you're not taking something, you know, the wrong way that's not meant to be taken the wrong way, mm -hmm. right? So what do you think, Eli? I think that I go back to what you were saying about in relationships and communication and getting to know people, um, if I'm dating you and I know that you're a fairly sensitive person, then there are certain things I'm not going to do or say. If I love you and I'm trying to make you my lady, I'm not going to do or say that because I know it's going to cause problems down the line. Mm -hmm. So that's about learning the person you're with. That's about learning the person you're with. And, um, and that comes with taking your time. And again, communication is key to everything. And mm -hmm. if your mate is a jokester, and you a jokester, so you have to be, it has to be give and take. Because you can't expect, like I think Jen said earlier, um, you can't expect somebody to, uh, I'm drawing a blank, say I'm getting old. You can't expect <laughs> someone, <laughs> you can't expect someone to understand what, what your expectations are or what? Well, well, no, 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 you can't expect somebody. So if I'm a jokester and if, if, give and take. 
just mm-hmm. give and take thing. Mm-hmm. If you should be able to, you know, to receive whatever you can give out, you should be able to receive it. So mm-hmm. if you're a really sensitive person, there are certain things you should be saying or doing because if those things come back to you, you're not going to react or handle them very well. Right. So it's a give and take thing. And it's about knowing who you're with. Mm-hmm. Right. And you can control that in a relationship. Now, work is a whole different animal. But with mm-hmm. the person you're intimate with, your partner, yeah, you should be able to control that and, and you know, be yeah. mindful of that. Yeah. Well, let me add this tidbit because I think that um, this is something that I've, I've come across. We live in a very passive aggressive society and that people use humor to communicate a lot of the things that they're very serious about. You know what I mean? And for me, you know, I think sometimes I think often with people, not even just me, how do you decipher between, you know, that passive aggressiveness versus that personalization? Because I know communication is key, but let's keep it yeah. all, all the way to 100. A lot of people like to slip, slide, slide shit in jokes. Right, right. exactly. And, and I always, I'm glad you say that because I always say there's always truth in humor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's, always, there's always a little bit of truth of you saying, oh, I was just joking, right? Because sometimes mm-hmm. people throw stuff out there jokingly. Yeah. Right. And point, you know, a point past, but they just want to see how you're going to handle that jokingly wise. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So again, for me, I think it goes back to just being very direct with communication. Like I'm quick to tell somebody, look, I'm sensitive. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm just letting you know, like if your voice is a little bit, if that bass in your voice is a little bit heavy, I'm going to address you on that. Like, whoa. You had a little bit bass in that voice a little bit, or your voice was a little bit elevated. Everything okay? Are we good? You know? Mm -hmm. So, because I don't want to beat around a bush or either walk Mm -hmm. away feeling some type of way, and that's not what your attention is. Right? So, So as a man, though, Che, can I say that? Can uh I tell you that I'm a little sensitive? uh, Watch what you say to me. Like, how you just express yourself. As a man, can I do that? And not be looked at with Man, I wonder what this bro. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> the double standard there. Yeah, it is. It, it Can is, I do that? It's a double standard. Would that you just me as being soft? But see, for, for me, no, I wouldn't look at you as being soft, but that's me. That's me. Mm-hmm. I don't know how other people, I mean, Jen, how would you feel? I mean, in the past, in my teens, you would have been a whole woman. You know what I mean? <laughs> but <laughs> now. You know, it's to be special with your feelings. I mean, I, of course, yes. I would encourage that. I like when a man expresses mm-hmm. his sensitive side. Like, I want to yes. know that you, I want to know that, you know, what makes you hurt or makes you sad. You don't always have to be macho around me. So, mm-hmm. you know, I want to know that, you know, but. Is there again, a point where you draw the line, though? Is okay. There a point where you draw the line? All right, now look, bro. Now, if this, <laughs> and I don't think this is a gender thing, what I'm going to say, because I, mm-hmm. I think this is with anybody. If you're constantly complaining about the same thing day in and day out, rather you male or female, then at some point it's just like, okay, what are you going to do about it? Mm-hmm. Like, right. let's stop talking about it and complaining about it. What steps are you taking to fix it? You know, how do we move forward from it you know so if you're not feeling good or something's constantly bothering you okay then what do we need to do to make sure that this thing is not bothering you anymore what is it that we need to do and put in place you know Mm -hmm. if there's things that you are trying to achieve and you've been talking about it you know day in and day out okay so what steps do we need to take to make sure that you can achieve these goals so I think you know rather it's female or male at some point it's like okay all right that's that's cool and everything but you know let's kind of move let's move forward <laughs> so that's my thought that's mm. my thought but i love okay. when I, I love a brother we know that expresses himself that's able to express himself i mean i welcome that because i think mm-hmm. you know a lot of society has taught our young men especially our young black men not to show feelings not to show emotions so when you have the opportunity you know, to be able to express, you know, hey, I don't, that makes me feel a certain type of way when you do that. You know, I, I ask you not to do something and you continue to do it and that bothers me. Then mm-hmm. I welcome that. We're having dialogue. We're having a mm-hmm. conversation and that's important. I'm glad women are moving away from me. Hey, where you at a race? <laughs> I'm on Kirkwood Highway. It's a trap. <laughs> 
I'm glad women are moving away from that, you know, that that you're a sucker or you're a soft type of I call it culture when it comes to men expressing themselves. Yeah. I think when that comes with age, wisdom, and maturity, and mm-hmm. you know, and I know you have that because you know, like Jen said, when she was younger, even in my early twenties, certain things you just can't say to a girl. You gotta suck it up. Or mm-hmm. if you just said that your feelings were hurt because she didn't want to be with you no more. You could, you just had to like, dog, move on. We don't mm-hmm. say them, we replace them. Like the whole mentality, you yeah. know. And I think that it's so much more pressure and stress when you can't. Express yourself, I think. Mm. So let me ask you this, Ed. Do you think that because of how men are generally kind of conditioned to deal with their emotions, do you think that kind of plays a part in to, or do you think that that kind of plays a part into why women kind of tend to take things more personally than uh, the men? Do you feel like there's a relationship Um, between the two? Absolutely, because the the, the culture of being a, a boy slash man and I'm sure in, in every culture, but I'm just going to speak about us. Mm-hmm. Um, you're definitely taught to hold your feelings in and to be less emotional. Imagine being hurt by a girl and and running and telling your boys, man, man I cried last night. Oh, girl, don't want to be with me no more. And when you're in your 20s, mm. that's, gonna, that's not going to be support. You're going to get clowned. So mm. we have been conditioned to hold our feelings in if, if I... If our damn ankle is hurt, that's why black men don't go to the doctor. We're conditioned to just right. deal with shit. It, 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 seriously, it, it comes from emotional to the physical. Mm. I'm not going to, I ain't going to, what, what, what black people say when you ask them how they're doing? I ain't going to complain. You know, but <laughs> there might be mm-hmm. something you really need to complain about, whether it be emotionally, physically, or mentally, and it needs to be addressed. But we've been conditioned so much not to complain. And to not express ourselves, that there hasn't been a position now where we have hypertension and people running around here emotionally yeah. jacked up, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's so many, so many. There are so many side effects to us not being permitted to express ourselves and not be and not have backlash behind. Us. Mm. So it's not just. People. So now this brings me to another another topic here. Not the same topic, but why is it that men can't keep it real with each other? Why do we have? Why do y'all have these surface conversations instead of? So, for, like, let me see. How can I put this out there without? All right. So Just I can say it. it's okay. I can do one on one. I can do a one on one session with a man in therapy, and he's breaking it down, and he's he's you know pouring out, and you know which I'm good. I'm welcoming all that. But when it comes down to trying to put a support group. A men's support group together, right? Men, men tend to, to shy away from that. It's like they don't want to be vulnerable in front of other men. Mm. You know, they don't want to. And these are some serious issues that need to be addressed and need to be talked about amongst men. I'm a female. Now I can help you to a certain point, but you need to know that there's other males that are going through some of the same things and that is feeling the same feelings and that is able to be vulnerable in a in an isolated or intimate um space but when you put those men together it's all surface talk oh yeah mm-hmm. what about those sixers what about those eagles yeah like we're yeah. not actually talking about the stuff that really needs to be addressed so what's what's up with that and i love that kid picture <laughs> <laughs> sorry my phone that's okay um so are you were you done uh, yes, I'm done. <laughs> no, no, what I missed when my phone rang. I yeah, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm just going to say, it comes down to it. When you asked me that. <laughs> my bad. Look, watch this. I apologize if I finish you in any way. Oh, right. <laughs> I <just kept> it. <laughs> Queen. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Oh, uh, oh there too. But anyway, the, the whole men addressing women as queens. I was telling this friend of mine, I was like, you know, brothers be using that to try to get with you too, right? Not that they don't think you're a queen, <laughs> but now that's just like, that's just the way we talking right now. Excuse me, queen, how you doing? You know, and then there they go. They want to talk. They're not saying, oh, damn, I'm going ass fat. They say, oh, excuse me, queen. But then they don't get it. Like, anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> don't fuck with that queen shit. I was just telling my daughters that the, uh, like a couple of weeks ago. You I said, right. everything you don't, don't think you're a queen. He's just trying to get in. Some of them just trying to get in between. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
can't live. I cannot. That's the slogan, That's the slogan for 2021. Oh. Um, but <laughs> anyway, say, I'm going to tell you this. Unless you have one brother in your group that starts to express themselves, you can forget it. Mm-hmm. I think it'll take one or two that, that can be vulnerable enough to be real and say, this is what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. And then once black men feel comfortable, um, and they see, all right, well, you know, they look at the reaction of everybody and it seems to be okay. Nobody's saying, damn, we weak as fuck. You know, as long as you, you know, if you get like a mature response to that, I guarantee you everybody will start speaking out. You just got to have that one or two that's going to jump yeah. off the ledge right. and the rest, we're, you know, we're men, we're dumb. We're all follow. We all jump off right with yeah. them because we really got some stuff that we got to talk about. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And yeah. you know what? And, and and that's the thing, Eli, it's getting everybody together. I can't even mm-hmm. get them together in the same room or right now virtual room. I can't mm-hmm. even get them together in the same room to even have that one person to be able to share. Because I do believe that, you know, if they would even come together as a group and you have one man, like you said, just start to open up. Other men would say, you know what, bro? Yeah, yeah, you know, I can relate or whatever the case may be. But mm-hmm. I can't even get you all in one room to be able to have that experience. Well, the next time you try to organize a group, if you got a couple of guys, let me know. I got some shit I can talk about. And okay. I don't have a problem with it. I'm not okay. afraid of how other men mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, what Eli, what, what, thank you. What do you think that the fear is or the hesitancy in, in, in engaging in kind of dialogue about some of these issues with other men who may be also going through the same things? I think it's just appearing soft or weak. And, it, mm. and, it, and it's really elementary. Okay. Appearing soft or weak in front of... Because think about this. We walk down the street and, and we're mean mugging the, an, another brother that we don't even know. So if I, if I... And we always look at each other as a threat. Not like uh, a threat, like, like it's a physical threat. Like, oh, this mother might try to rob me. Or what are you looking at? Like, look at another dude from across the room. What, what's going to happen? You were still looking at. It's always hostility toward one another. So how are you going to go from that hostility to being sensitive toward, toward men that you probably on the street will look at me like, what, what the fuck are you looking at? Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? So we have to break that generation. Like, that's that mean because you see a brother say, what's up to him? Like, we don't always have to be mean mugging and, and, and on Absolutely. guard. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will say honestly, I have to say the same thing when it comes down to, to females, and that that is something that mm. you know I, we because yeah, I'm y'all mean. Like, we'll keep going. All right. Okay. We're not talking about that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's the so same. Thing, <laughs> that's the same thing when it comes down to um to you know to women to females, mm. right? Females, mm-hmm. you know, we can see another female and we'll look her up and down. And in our minds, it's like, dad, she she pretty or her body mm-hmm. is crazy or I love her outfit. But we will not tell that woman that. We mm-hmm. will not. Instead, we will stare her down or we will try to find something to talk about that's not positive. Mm-hmm. That's- so, mm-hmm. and it's so crazy because we've been so conditioned to do this and we've done it so much that like, I don't have a problem telling another female she's pretty, you know, mm-hmm. or, oh, you look really nice or whatever. I don't have a problem complimenting another female because I'm comfortable and I'm very secure in the woman that I am, mm-hmm. right? But I've noticed, even if I do that, not all the time, but every now and again, when I do that, the woman might be surprised, like, oh, like, thank you, or you know, I'm like, yeah, you sis, like you're beautiful, you know, mm-hmm. or you're wearing that, you know? So it's not just a, a man thing. I think women, and I think we're probably more guilty at doing this than men are. Mm-hmm. We do not uh, uplift each other or, um, you know, share positivity amongst each other when we see another woman. We always try to go into that tear down mood, you mm-hmm. know? So, you know, I think I, I think we see it on both sides, Eli, for, for men and, and for women. I think so. I mean, I think it definitely is an ego thing. It comes either you're my threat or competition or both. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, Eli, unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. 
Here's a That's slight okay. difference, I think, in that whole scenario with men and women. I think that, like like you said, women are, y'all size each other up. Like when a woman walks into a room, the first thing most women do is look at her from head to toe. Take mm-hmm. out her, her, her mm-hmm. shoes, her outfit, her hair, her nails, or look at this feet. You know, whatever <laughs> it is, most women are thinking. Now, I don't necessarily size up another dude when he walks into a room. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not worried about what he got on cause that's what, or what he's wearing and all of that. I think mm-hmm. that that is definitely more of a female thing. However, I do think, like I said, on the street or out in the community, that's where we do our sizing up at. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We just got to know all. What you going to do? I need to be ready. You don't know. Right. And you don't know, to be honest. But right. we have to start giving each other the benefit of the doubt. So the topic is, am I being too sensitive? Am I taking it personal? So now mm. we're talking about male and female. So what about, um, Eli, you brought up... Um, how men are now using queen <laughs> to to like get what women you know so um what is it about do you think that sometimes females take it too personal when a, a, a brother may come up and say hey you know sis you look you look really nice and sometimes females be like i'm taking i have a man he didn't ask you all that he's just giving you a compliment right so what do you think about stuff like that I think that because I think because we're out of pocket so much. Right. <laughs> if nine dudes come up to you and they're trying to holler and that one is just saying, Hey Queen, you're beautiful, I hope you have a great day, you don't even hear you already shut him down before he get everything out. Right. Because we're we're yeah, we're so out of pocket the majority of the time. Mm-hmm. So there is no benefit of the doubt for us. So I wish I understand that. But mm-hmm. I do think I think that I think you, you, you have to wait and let let a person say what they have to say. You never know. They can hear and say something that's going to uplift you and, and you have an awesome day. But I, I just think that because we're always, most of us are always up to no good. Y'all just like, just go ahead, brother. Ain't nobody trying to hear right. all <laughs> <laughs> Right, right, exactly. Now, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to throw something out here, Eli, because we've been knowing each other for a very long time. And that's my boy. That's my partner right there. Um, you have been telling me <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this. <laughs> what? But you have been telling me for years, <clears throat> Jen, Eli would say, you too damn friendly. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you too damn friendly. This is why this stuff, because you know, crazy stuff be happening to me. And Jen, you've been with me a couple of mm-hmm. times when we've been out and, you know, things have happened and, and, and you know, so... Um, and it's not a thing of I'm being naive or I don't know, I'm not paying attention to my surroundings or I just try to look for the best in people. Mm. I really try not to um, <laughs> to automatically assume right. that that's what their end goal is. But mm. I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to let Eli talk on this because he has said this to me from the beginning of our friendship. And, you know, I, sometimes and, yeah. like, am, am I? <laughs> <laughs> Even Jen, though. What? What's your what? What? Oh, I didn't agree. I thought Jen said you are too friendly. My bad. No, I said <laughs> Jen did not agree. Don't even try. No, no, no. Words in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, say so here's the thing with your friendliness. Oh, geez. I think that I I think that it's okay to be friendly. I think you don't set boundaries. Well, at least you didn't used to. He just hit me with the B word, Jen. I'm saying. <laughs> Come, come oh, say, exactly. some of the stuff that you would allow to happen, and I'm not, and I'm gonna say allow because I would say you need to just nip that in the bud, like let them know off the top. It could be in a workplace. She was just being super inappropriate, going too far, like stuff that if HR found out, they get fired. Now she'd be mm, like, you know, you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, and great, that person was on drugs and whatnot, but that's the the point. There's still boundaries. <laughs> Not just him, but I'm saying overall, Shay. I, and because you are pretty, dudes are gonna, you know, dudes are gonna do what they're gonna do. But I think you still, in the midst of being pretty and and being smart and intelligent and all of that, you still gotta have boundaries. Mm-hmm. And I think that you try to spare other people's feelings at the expense of getting yours hurt or feeling violated. Mm-hmm. I receive that. I re- I receive I receive all of that. Um, I, I, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And in that situation that you're talking about, absolutely, that happened many, 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 many years ago. Um, 
don't know how much I'm elaborate on it, but I do re- I do receive that. That was a situation that could have been probably nipped in the bud. And yes, I, I was trying to spare that person um, their job and, and all that stuff that was going on during that time. Um, you know, and I've learned, you know, I've, I've learned, I, I, I still think there is some work that I, I have to do, especially, um, we all do. It's not just, you. So don't, <laughs> it, it's like, it's not a personal thing. Yeah. Oh no. I received everything that you said, but I, I had to bring it up because I think that, you know, it was something that I've always thought about, you know, mm-hmm. you always on my right. shoulder be like, you need to nip that in the bud right now. You know, like that got out of hand. It didn't have to get out of hand. And yeah, it was, it's really about exactly what you said, you know, sparing other people's feelings, with it, and, but at a cost at, of them making- At your own money. expense. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, one thing, I think one thing we do, and I do it too, Say, I think it's the nature of, of who we are and then the, the business we're in. Mm-hmm. I think that we're conditioned to always try to help. Even mm. to our own detriment. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that dude ended up losing his job because of his lifestyle. So, I, there, sometimes we just got to call a spade a spade. And, and if you get fired for doing some stuff you're not supposed to do, that's, your, that's on you. Yeah. Like, you're an adult. You have to take responsibility for what you're doing and what you're not doing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't think we, I don't think there's a situation where you would have had to feel bad about that. that. The person was just, they were disrespectful and they were violating you, you know, not every here and there, but consistently. Mm-hmm. So, and, that, and, that's, and that's an extreme scenario, but mm-hmm. I just say, don't ever compromise yourself to save somebody who ain't trying to save themselves. Like, that's mm-hmm. the point. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. I agree. Um, any other examples? Because So we can get the heat up off of me for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it just got real hot up in here. <laughs> okay. I hope you got some deodorant now. Oh, indeed, 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 indeed. Have either, must be that <laughs> have either of you experienced um, maybe a situation where you were just like joking or being sarcastic and not really meaning any harm, but someone has taken it, uh, you know, taken it out of context? I'm sure Absolutely. you have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know you have, Eli. <laughs> I know you have. <laughs> it just happened, right? Like right before we got on the call. Oh, snap. I'm not going, I'm, you're not going to do that. I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. But I mean, can you think of anything? I know Eli got stories for days, but mm-hmm. has anything like that, has someone taken you the wrong way or taken something that you meant to be, you know, light and they took it heavy. Yes, I think on both sides. Um, I've been the person kind of, you know, saying something someone took out of context and then I'm being on, been on the receiving end of that as well. Um, and it's kind of interesting to, to navigate those kind of situations because it's, again, we live in a very passive aggressive society where we deliver some truths, sometimes truths in, 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 in things in the, in the form of a joke. And sometimes we hide behind that. Right. And so, but there was an article that I was reading kind of resonates to this topic where it was like, we take things personal that trigger insecurities um, within us, you know? Right. And I think that it's fairly interesting. Like, and I want to hear from like Eli too, like from a, a man's perspective, like when someone approaches you and says they've taken something personal that you've done, like how do you navigate a situation like that? Well, first and foremost, I'm definitely going to try to, uh, I'm, I'm going to hear them out. And if I, even if I don't feel like I did anything wrong, I'm going to just, I, you know, I, I will, I will let you um, get it off your chest and I'll apologize because if you're offended, then who am I not to say, Right. I'm sorry for what I did, said to you. Um, mm-hmm. When I was young, I'd be like, man, you don't sit your ass down, ain't nobody. <laughs> I was just playing with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that's not how, you know what I mean? As an adult, as a, as a mature adult now, I understand that, you know, I have to, you know, uh, right my wrong. And mm-hmm. I don't want to be around somebody I have to see every day and they feel like, oh, FM, he, he's ignorant, he's disrespectful because that's not who I am. Mm-hmm. So I definitely don't want to be perceived that way. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. So I'm definitely going to talk to you about it. If you want to talk to me about it, we can talk about it. I'm going to try to face it if I can. Mm. And you know what? And I, I think too, um, it, we also have to be mindful when you see someone that's triggered or is, and you know that you was joking. And like, if you would have said this to anybody else, they would have known that you was joking. But this mm-hmm. person is like clearly like irked by what you said. Mm-hmm. Then that's a sign. That's a that's a sign right there that that's a trigger for them. It's mm-hmm. something right. about what you said, how you said it, you know, the tone you use, maybe your body language, maybe mm-hmm. it was a trigger for them. It could be triggering some type of trauma, right? Mm-hmm. So um, some of the some of the techniques that I may use is, you know what? <clears throat> like, what what did you hear me say? You know, right. you have them repeat back what it was that they heard. Because surprisingly, something may leave your mouth and by the time it lay into their ears, they heard something totally different. Absolutely. Right? So what mm-hmm. I heard you said was, I ain't jack and I'm lazy and I don't, you know, no, that's not what I said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's definitely not what I said. But like you said earlier, Jen, it's your own insecurities that you may have Mm-hmm. That's changing the narrative of that situation, the narrative of that story, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, like for me now, I haven't had any trauma with anyone yelling at me or elevating their voice. I just don't like it. You can have a conversation with me like I'm talking to you. So there's no need for you to take your voice up. Mm-hmm. Right? So it wasn't, it's not necessarily any trauma attached to it. I just don't like it because we are mm-hmm. not called for. So right. if someone is trying to have a conversation with me and their voice starts to elevate, then now I have a problem because I go on defense mode. Hold up. Wait a minute. Hold mm-hmm. on. <laughs> Let's will it back. Let's start over. You know, see how I'm speaking to you. That's how you need to speak to me. Otherwise, conversation is over. I already know mm-hmm. that. Right. So, you know, I think it's important that we make our, um, you know, I, we just make it known. If you're yelling at me or your voice is is rising, then I need to let you know that that's bothering me. And if I don't do that, then that's on me. Like if I'm not telling you, hey, hold on, Ed, before we go any further, can you like bring that down a little bit, bro? Like right. it's mm-hmm. you and I right here, you know what I'm saying? And he may say, oh, my bad, because that's the relationship we had, mm-hmm. right? Oh, my bad. But my point is, you know, and he would go ahead and state his point. Right. I'll, I'll keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're trying to say, huh? Can't, can't state his point, but he will acknowledge that his voice is, is deaf because people get excited. Mm-hmm. Right. Like they, people start talking and they don't mean any harm, but it's mm-hmm. just that they get excited and their voice starts to elevate. You know? right. Or in a man, you might feel, you might hear a little bit more bass come out, you know, mm-hmm. they're trying to they're, they're getting passionate about what it is that they're talking about. So I just think being mindful about it. And again, communication, clear communication is the key. If someone is making you feel a certain way, it is your job to say, hey, I don't like the way that feels. I'm not sure if that's what you're trying to present to me, but I'm letting you know how it is making me feel. Mm-hmm. And you have the dialogue from there. Mm-hmm. I think, too, an important part of, you know, what you were saying, too, is considering the source of where this, this, you know, information is coming from. If something, someone is saying something that feels very triggering for you, right, considering who that person is and facing our feelings against the facts, it is extremely easy, especially when we feel triggered, to kind of view the way that we feel as a fact. Our feelings are valid, but doesn't always necessarily make them true. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something that like when I was younger, I would do like if I like I I had a scenario why I said something about somebody and they had a family member in the room and I had no idea. Mm -hmm. This is where I'm learning how small Delaware was back when I was young. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So I'll give you the quick scenario. So Uh (laughs) hang out down UD with this girl that I knew from high school. Right. And so she pulls out our yearbook. So it was me, her, my homeboy, and then her roommate and this other dude was there who went to school with him. I, we, yeah, I just met him. So we were going through the yearbook just talking about people and stuff. And I was like, oh, I said, you remember LJ? I ain't going to say her name. 
I said, she was so ugly. And she had this mold that grew out of her face. <laughs> so we're all, so er, everybody was laughing except for the girl that I graduated oh with. My God. <laughs> and he was like, and I was like, I was like, what's wrong with y'all? And and the girl was like, um, I think that's his cousin. He said, yeah, nigga, that's my cousin. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, what are the odds? <laughs> What are the odds of that being his cousin? Oh my goodness. Damn. So so I was like, so you know, we went on. So he was a little salty about it. I said, you know, I said, my bad. I didn't say my bad. I said, my bad, bro. I'm sorry, whatever I said. And so he didn't necessarily like he wasn't trying to hear what I was saying. So why did I get mad that he wasn't trying to accept my <laughs> mm. <laughs> So it eventually come to me saying, What else you did? And you ugly cousin. <laughs> And we always we always came to blows, but that's my point about like being mature and growing. Like, there, I know people, and it's not just me. People will apologize and get mad if you don't accept it. Mm-hmm. Like, what kind of crap is that? You messed up. <laughs> now, what you mad for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, you got you got to be careful. You don't know. I'm telling mm-hmm. Delaware is small. People Damn. know. <laughs> Yeah, and she was a military kid that was originally from New York, so I would never. Oh wow! That. Wow! I went to Caesar Rodney, so all the kids from the Air Base all went to that school uh, back then. So they choice it now, but back then you went to see our school district if you lived on the base. Okay. So what are the odds of him that being her damn cousin? Damn. Right. Exactly. And he was salty too. I was like, damn, she was so ugly. That big mole growing out of her face. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> It wasn't a solid Janet Jackson mold. You know the it's funny like little, thing? They, they, they might be watching right now. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey. They might be watching Jay, right now. <laughs> Jay, it was one of the molds. If the wind was blowing, it would move. <laughs> oh, my God. Not you talking about sister's mold. <laughs> See, and then we just talk about sensitive. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I'm just, I'm just trying to paint the picture for you, Jay. I got it. Holy moly donut shop. I got it. I have it. <laughs> Point taken. <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, real quick before we wrap up, guys, what do you think about earlier? I was saying how we are living in this cancel culture. Anything mm. that you say is cancel cancel. Because I'm not going to lie. Some things need to be canceled. Right. <laughs> some things need to be canceled. But I do feel like at this point, it has gotten to a place where it's just like, whew. You know, mm-hmm. are we being too sensitive? Are we taking things personal, too personal? Um, I mean, what is your thoughts? And that, and that's kind of, I'm like in between because especially with this racial stuff. Mm-hmm. So what are your, what are your thoughts? So I feel like it, a, a mixture of different feelings. I feel like people kind of use cancel culture as a way to kind of exercise control over power control and power over things they can't in their own lives. Remember mm-hmm. I said a little bit earlier that people hold themselves to oh, hold other people to a standard that they themselves don't even hold, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that has a, a part to play in why people feel so compelled and fueled to kind of uh, cancel people, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And this is not to say everybody in cancel culture does this, but I mean, just kind of the pattern that we've kind of been seeing lately, like they'll dig up stuff from like three, like 10 years ago, a quote that was kind of, yeah. you know, said haphazardly and kind of hold them under this light, this interrogation light, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Eli? I think that, so say I'm on the fence with it too. And I'll tell you why. So Jen just said people would dig up something from 10 years ago and try to hold you to that light. So when it comes to racism, black people, we try to have it both ways. Okay, you can't be calling us N words and saying racial things, but yet we'll do it to each other in front of you. Mm-hmm. I've never seen when, when, when black people are, are addressing a white person and then there's anger, F you nigga, fuck you nigga. Mm-hmm. Like, what are we what are we doing? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So or or it's 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 only cancel culture if it's somebody we don't like. So if mm-hmm. If somebody, if Kevin Hart said something 10 years ago, but we all like Kevin Hart, mm-hmm. it's okay. If Donald Trump, we pull up something, I'm just using him. If Donald Trump said something 10 years ago and we pull up and it appears racist, we want to cancel him. Mm-hmm. So either we're going to be canceling everybody or every, or we're going to have to live with everybody's ability to have their free speech and not mm-hmm. be sensitive. We can't, 
we can't utilize cancel culture because we don't like that person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or what they said. Mm-hmm. We can't have it both ways. Well, which is it? Yeah. So I'm on the fence with it. And so this is certain things I don't do in front of certain people. That way, I don't want to ever make you feel like you're comfortable enough that you can come and talk to me that way. Mm. That part. Saying exactly. So it's it's the whole thing there. I, I'm on the fence with it too, Shay. Yeah. Something be canceled, but but can we have it both ways? Mm. So I I was presented with this question, and and um the gentleman that was talking to me, we were having a conversation. Um, and when I say this, by no means was he saying this was okay, but it was just a thought that came up. Um, so I'm gonna share that. Um, he was like, why is it okay if uh, a gay man, like a, your gay friend may come in and be like, um, bitch, you ain't cooked me nothing to eat. <laughs> well, bitch, you're about, you know, he was like, but if your man come in and say, bitch, you ain't cooked me nothing to eat, they can say the same exact thing. Uh, like, why is it okay for your gay friend to um, call you a B and not okay for your man to call you a B, right? And <laughs> so I immediately said, well, it's the tone that you say it in. It's, it's how you say it. Right? Right. No, not, not for me. I'm just saying in general, I said, I think probably it's, it's the tone, you know. Mm-hmm. And then as I was thinking, I said, well, in honesty, it's really not okay. In either way, you're still being called a B, mm-hmm. no matter what tone you're using it, you know, rather you saying, you know, bitch, you ain't got me nothing to eat versus bitch, you ain't nothing to eat. <laughs> So, you know but I thought it was a, it was a it was a very um smart question to, mm-hmm. to ask and, and honestly I really didn't have an answer for him I just kind of laughed and thought about it I was like mm-hmm. okay he was like why would you say you would take offense more so from the man saying it than mm-hmm. your, your gay friend coming in saying it you know mm. So, um, and I was like that's true you're, you're absolutely right I can't mm-hmm. answer that question right now but you're absolutely right. So, do y'all address y'all girlfriends using the B word? I do. Own <laughs> <laughs> it, girl. Own yeah, it. it. Is today. <laughs> Bitch, guess what the T is today? Yes, yes, I do. Yes. The Why did I, I think Jen would say no and Shay would say yeah? <laughs> see I'm out of here right now. See, see that? See there? So. <laughs> I think too, a lot of my, a lot of my girlfriends, Jen being one of them, you know, mm-hmm. um, they may say B-I-S, B-I-S-H, bish. <laughs> Jen says the real one. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like the time oh, when we're mean. talking, if there's some real tea she need to spill, she'll be like B-I-S-H. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Levante. <laughs> wow. So, um, yeah, yeah. So I think, and again, I think it's just um, like how we you, we say with the N word, it's a term. Mm-hmm. We kind of turned it into a term of en- endearment, mm-hmm. and, and, and you know, the love that becomes comes behind it. So we know when to say dish versus if we got to confront another female and something going on, that whole thing may sound differently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Can you guys think of anything else before we wrap up? Anything else? Um, any mm-hmm. comments? Anything that we missed in regards to this? Mm-mm. So that I could- what is the takeaway from this? How do we, and I would say, especially with relationships, when you're trying to get to know someone, not just your intimate partner, but even, you know, as a, a as a friend, you know, a girlfriend, your boy, your brother, whatever, you know, how do we, what is our takeaway? What do we want people to be mindful of, you know, mm. when we walk away from this tonight? What are some things that we need to keep in mind um, when we're dealing with other people? Um, I would say at the very most that not everything everyone does is always about us. You know, sometimes people's mm. behaviors and responses are more reflection about them than they, it is about you. Definitely. And when you find yourself taking things personal, face your feelings against the facts. What do you know, right? What do you know to be true? And then consider the source yes. of who's selling you this information. Yes, absolutely. There's a little technique that I use um, with some of my patients um, write down the facts, write down the emotions. Mm. 
Mm. You know, okay. stick to the facts and not the feelings because mm. your feelings will have you going all over the place. Mm -hmm. Your feelings will have you changing the narrative of the story. Your feelings yep. will have you have irrational thoughts that are not necessarily true. So when, mm -hmm. when we're having these conversations, we're talking about something, I'm saying, okay, so those were your feelings and those were your emotions. So what were the facts? Mm -hmm. the actual facts? What do you know to be true? Let's talk mm -hmm. about that. And once you write that down and you realize what the facts are and all these other feelings and emotions that's going on, that's just you going through this emotional roller coaster. Once you get through that and you stick to the facts, you usually have everything that you need to know right there in front of you. Mm -hmm. You know? So my, my takeaway would be stick, stick it to the facts, remove the emotions and feelings out of it. And if you need to figure that out, then sit down in front of with a piece of paper and pen and write down the actual facts. Mm -hmm. What your feelings and emotions are about the facts. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's good. Okay. You Eli. <laughs> I hit you twofold. One, we 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 do need to stop being we need we do need to be less sensitive. Absolutely. On the flip side of that, I think we also have to be mindful of what we say to people. Mm -hmm. It costs you nothing to be nice and to be kind. Mm -hmm. and, be and if you stay in that lane right there, then it's gonna be really hard to offend somebody, you know, or to or to make them feel disrespected. Let's be less sensitive and also be mindful of how we talk to people. And I think we'll be okay. Mm. Very well said. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Take that 30 second brain fart I had out. I know you're the edit queen. <laughs> <laughs> Handle that. <laughs> don't, don't, have, don't have me on a video like this. <laughs> I got froze or something. <laughs> Listen, it's all good. That's what makes us, you know, real to people. People see the real mm -hmm. us and, you know, our hiccups, our mistakes and all of that. So mm -hmm. it's it's all good. But um, okay. I, just, I just want to say thank you guys for, um, you know, jumping on for the rebirth tonight. Um, I think we, you know, we gave some good information and, and left people with some techniques that they can walk away with. Um, mm -hmm. Let's try to live a, a stress a stress free life a little bit mm. in order to do that. Stop being stop taking everything so personal. And like you said, Jen, it's not always about you. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not always about you, sis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know, let's let's try to um just make things a little bit lighter. Enjoy life. We never know when um our our time is is coming. So enjoy life to the fullest. Don't feed into stuff. Don't overanalyze things. It is what it is. And if you're unclear about something, just use your words. Use your words, right? We talk mm -hmm. about your words. Have dialogue around and have communication. Have healthy communication. This is the rebirth. We thank you guys for joining us. We are looking to be back, I'm hoping, next week with another show. We want to try to come back a little bit more consistent. Our lives are crazy busy. Um, we all are therapists and all are doing Person. amazing things Let's get together, but we gotta, yeah, we, we definitely <laughs> gotta, we gotta get this thing moving a little bit better than what we have. So thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Eli. Thank you, Jen. Thank you to the rebirthers. Bye. This is the rebirth. You guys have a great night. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.